this is Jerry Master Daniel 96 and today I will be reading an article from Shadow Council from Shadow Council and this user is need more needs more sprinkles and the title is Lost Son of Mandalore an origin story for Finn in episode 9 and let's begin We've spoken before of Finn's role specifically in the Skywalker family arc and how his future is heavily foreshadowed to interweave with them as Han Solo's did before him. But what about where he came from before the beginning of The Force Awakens? In this article, I make a case for the backstory for Finn that both adds depth to his past and gives meaning to his future. The character of Finn has thus far had little of his backstory explored. We know he was taken from his family at a very young age. It is ambiguous whether they survived the event during which he was taken, that he was raised to become a stormtrooper for the First Order, and that he after being forced to attack innocent civilians unlike Ray, whose identity mystery is heavily built into the plot, Finn's ambiguous origins factor less into his personal arc and are treated as secondary to his journey to define himself separate from where he came from. None, none for the less this does not mean Finn would not benefit from a backstory only that the backstory he is given must be carefully chosen to amplify rather than for sh than overshadow his existing arc Amon much speculation that he is the son or grandson of legacy characters the child of royalty jedi or even imperials i propose this finn is a mandalorian the descent of generations both warriors and peacemakers and just his counterpart ray carries the burden of her family's legacy he carries the burden of an entire world first bit of background canonically the people of mandalore were originally noble but ruthless warriors who launched brutal attacks against the people of weaker planets they also harbored a fierce animosity against the Jedi as reflected in the Mandalorian Jedi War. This war culminated in the destination of Mandalore's ecosystem, rendering it barren and lifeless and setting the stage for the struggle over Mandalore's future that lead to the Mandalorian Civil War many years later. This war took place during the advent of the Clone Wars was Wage between the so-called new Mandalorians who believed in a peaceful Mandalore and those on the other side who wanted to restore Mandalore's place as the fearsome warrior society. The new Mandalorians triumphed and led by Duchess Satine Cries began rebuilding Mandalore into a pacifist state. However, this period would not last long as an alliance between Darth Maul, his Shadow Collective organization, and the Mandalorian insurgent group known as Death Watch launched a successful corp to take control of Mandalore and plunge it back into violence and chaos. Emperor Palpatine took advantage of this opportunity to imprison Maul and seize control of Mandalore for the Galactic Empire. A second Mandalorian civil war occurred concurrent with the wider galactic civil war, which ended with the Mandalorian people triumphing over imperial rule and the benevolent Lady Bo-Katan cries became the new society's leader. The state of Mandalore from this point forward is unknown. However, regardless of any presumed peace that was restored to Mandalore at any point after this second civil war, the Mandalorian people nonetheless maintained the legacy, one legacy of war and violence, the creation of the Republic's clone troopers, which ultimately evolved into the Empire and the First Order stormtroopers. The original clone troopers were built from DNA of a Mandalorian man, Jango Fett, who, though not necessarily 
especially loyal to the Mandalorian government or people, wore Mandalorian's traditional armor and thus stood as an emblem of the culture's Asian warlike traditions. This fearsome looking armor eventually morphed into the ominous hollow eyed stormtrooper mask and uniform as appropriated by the Empire, ensuring that no matter what degree of concord the Mandalorian people created there for their society, their culture would always be associated with the violence perpetuated by the foot soldiers of the Empire and First Order as long as Stormtroopers continued to don the guise of Mandalorians to commit atrocities. The Mandalorian culture would continue to be shackled to its history of violence. Similar to the suspicious gap in Luke Skywalker's story between the OT and sequel trilogy eras, the deferred information about the state of Mandalore during this time begs the question, what was going on there that the story group has not yet revealed. One possibility is that the planet was ravaged by the First Order, although it is not geographically speaking within the areas that the First Order typically launched their attacks. Nonetheless, a planet populated by historically skilled warriors with a new unstable government would be an ideal target for an attack especially aimed at kidnapping children to raise into stormtroopers. Given Finn's mysterious backstory, canon evidence that Mandalore was raided in this fashion may be tipping the hand more than Lucasfilm is willing to do at this point, hence the radio silence from the planet in canon thus far. Another possibility is that Finn's parents were Mandalorians fleeing another period of civil strife on the planet and Finn was stolen from them during a First Order attack on the star system they fled to. We now set up the story of a boy stolen from a complex culture of both warriors and peacekeeper mercenaries and liberators whose warrior side is a divorced from all cultural context and used as a weapon to fight a battle he has no stake in. But the beginning of The Force Awakens, we see that Finn's compassionate pacifist nature has not been bred out of him. He is the only stormtrooper who we see who has maintained his side of the Mandalorian spirit, which may foreshadow a unique ability to awaken his comrades to their nature and rally them to fight back against those who sought to rid them out of it. The theme of, res of restoration and redemption of old legacies has always been heavily touched upon in the sequel trilogy, particularly as it applies the journey of the Skywalker family. The Skywalker family is original sin. Its tendency towards the dark side was rooted in the Petras, Anakin Skywalker, and his fall to the dark, the family legacy was restored to the light side through the actions of Anakin's children, Luke and Leia, and was then reverted again by his grandson, Ben Solo. Ray, the youngest heir to their grandfather's legacy, serves as the restorer, returning to the complicated but overall light-sided natural state that it was in before Anakin's fall. A similar arc can be foreseen for Finn if he is in fact a child of Mandalore. He, the original Mandalorians were torn between warlike and pacifist factions, reached a period of peace, and then had their culture and heritage exploited to become the face of the Empire's brutality. Finn is Mandalorian, he turns Mandalorian warriors from emblems of oppression to emblems of liberation. Mandalorian soldiers will no longer be associated with the beginning of a period of ongoing war, but rather 
with the end of it, we can also see hints in the deleted scene from The Last Jedi that Finn will not only bring peace to the galaxy through winning the war, but may also rally his fellow stormtroopers to rebel against those who kidnapped and indoctrinated them to begin with in doing so further defines of his legacy and betraying victory was not through the battle but also through bringing freedom to others. Um, that's all I read with the article and you can check out the rest in the description and I have to say that was a pretty interesting idea. I actually like that idea like I felt like since we haven't seen the Mandalorians yet in the Star Wars movies, like, you know, we've seen them in the books and the comics, the TV shows, like, why not bring Mandalorians to the bigger screen, like, and show Mandalore on the big screen, and I do like that as a good origin story for Finn, and that's all I gotta say, and article will be linked down below for you to check out the rest, and... Catch you guys next time, and don't forget to like this video, and subscribe to the channel, and see ya.